All right, everybody. I am here with Saul Klein. Hey, Saul. Hey, how's it going, Jennifer? Good to Great. see you. Great. And welcome to this special episode of Realtor Fight Club. We call this What Would You Do? And this is a series that airs every Wednesday where we talk about ethics and professional standards, either cases or different scenarios, and try to figure out what would we do and then find out if we were right. But today, my guest, Saul, I want to call you like the father of real estate or something like that. <laughs> Just because it's great. Um, <laughs> this is right, like the COVID, exactly. the COVID thing, right? And you gotta, if you stay home all the time, you got to do something to keep you occupied. So. Yeah, right. But um, you have been licensed since 1975, right? You were yes. a broker also, which mm -hmm. is awesome. President of your local board there in California. But one of the really interesting things about you is you basically got the first listings onto realtor.com. That's right. Wow. Somebody had to do it. What year was that? That was in 1995. It's actually a very interesting story because of the dynamics of the industry and the knowledge of technology and the, the access to the internet itself and all of the things that were going on at the time. It was a uh, it was very exciting and I still had my real estate business, but we had kind of spun off most of the things that we had done and we had built a property management and a financial planning business. And so that was almost seasonal kind of thing. So I was really fortunate then to participate at the highest levels of what was called the Realtors Information Network. As a matter of fact, on my team, the, who got hired after me, who I trained as a fellow named Bob Goldberg. And Bob is now the chief executive officer of the National Association of Realtors. That's awesome. I mean, without you going out there, beating doors down, convincing brokers to put the listings onto realtor.com. I mean, what would, where would we be? Well, so the, it was kind of interesting what was, and you had to go out there, right? And we right. had to, you, the, the presentations were done on black and white acetate overheads to show first who else was doing these kinds of things. The movies were starting to display inventory, right? And it was hard to search to find examples to, so I could get in front of a board of directors and say, this is the trend, this is what's valuable, the data is valuable. Now at the time, what I was in favor of was only putting the places and the listings in one place. And my theory was, and I was the one that got to develop the whole concept on this tiny little group of people that were doing this. <laughs> and it was only put them in one place and then everybody will learn they're there. It'll be like the Super Bowl and right. someday people will pay a lot of money to go find it. And that was built on that kind of model. And it was a dollar a listing a month. That's what we were going to charge realtors wow. to do this. And, and But it was your listing, your lead, right. dollar a listing a month. And it wouldn't have a lot of other agents around your listings, right? right? Dollar a listing a month. I mean, how would you pay a dollar a listing a month today? Yeah. And uh, so that was the idea. And, but then what happened is right when Realtor.com owned by a wholly owned subsidiary of the National Association of Realtors, RIN, the Realtors Information Network, when that took, when it went out there and launched in Atlanta in 1996, Microsoft had another product to compete and it was oh, called yeah. Home Advisor and it launched and it launched for free. Oh, and all, and what we said is don't put your listings there. Remember, we're building this thing here. And guess what most of the realtors did? Put it free. on the free one. They put it on the free one. Well, then what happened is there wasn't enough money to fund the business model oh. that realtor.com was built on. And the directors, the board of directors, you know how that works. These are realtors, people that run, they're the board. Of, they flew them all to, to uh, Chicago for a special meeting. Mm -hmm. in August of 1996. And the realtor member, the directors voted, we don't want to take the risk with members money. Uh, we can't do it for free, sell it. And that, this is not NAR sending, you've heard this before, NAR sent, sailed us down. No, it's not. And if you go back and look at the old presentations that I did, I warned that if we didn't keep the listings in one place, then the industry would change and there would be uh, institutions that would maybe be hostile to yeah. the way in which uh, real estate is practice. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're living it today. So, but it was fun. It was in you know, 1995, it was right before the big dot-com boom, $13 million funded by NAR. That was a lot of money. So I was like, a, in, I was at a startup and the, right. and the product was going to be to get listings. And we were like welcomed because we were realtors and we were developing this. And so it was a great 
great. It was a lot of fun. That sounds awesome. It was fun. I like it. That sounds really cool. But today we're going to talk about, uh, because this is what would you do? We're going to talk about article seven. I'm going to read the article seven and then we're going to talk about it because this can happen. I mean, this happens every day. So we don't have a specific like case or scenario, but article seven reads in a transaction, realtors shall not accept compensation from more than one party, even if permitted by law without disclosure to all parties and the informed consent of the realtor's client or clients. Yeah. You know, that's basically what that says is just because somebody says they understand or know and sign a document mm -hmm. doesn't mean they know. The signature on the line is not what is important. What is, I mean, it is important. It is. But have have very it. important though is the fact that they know what they're signing, that they're giving informed consent. And so how can you give informed consent to something unless what uh, consequences have been explained to you? So right. we often see this informed consent in agency and agency disclosure or commission in this case, right? We say, well, well they signed a form and they knew it. No, they knew it was going to be like dual agency or they knew who I was representing and getting paid by or whatever. Yeah, they signed the form, mm -hmm. but was it informed? Right. And so because then you might ask somebody after the fact, did you know that in this transaction, because you signed this form, you gave up these rights? Mm -hmm. If you'd have known that, would, would you have, have given up those rights? And right. if the answer is no way, then it wasn't informed consent. Right? And how do you because just because you explain something to somebody and especially if they're nodding and they say they understand, they sign the form. I mean. So. Well, let me again, I, I mentioned this is the book, The Language of Real Estate, the real estate encyclopedia written by my partner the last 25 years, John Riley, who's an attorney. Uh -huh. And uh, so John says, informed consent, consent to a certain act given after a full and fair disclosure of all facts needed to make a conscious choice. Only those with adequate reasoning facilities who can appreciate the implications and future consequences of an action can give informed consent, competent parties, right? So it has to be conscious. And so then, then the question is, well, how do you know they signed it? How do you know? Well, right. then as part of maybe the your practice of an agent's practice, a broker's practice is being cl real clear in these areas that maybe of like other... what I like what you said, like what you're giving up. And I mean, we do sign this form. It's, it's the agency, well, consumer guide and well, in this case, agency disclosure form. Yeah. So a when, when they here's a, a form, right? You sign it. But did you know what you were signing? Because right. what you were doing, it was you were actually giving consent to something. Right. Did you know right. what you were giving consent to? Too. Right. And, and the, the problem is that's what we have to be so careful in, in real estate, because the only way that is ever decided is after the fact by a judge. Right. Right. Who says or, or arbitration panel. Right? Yeah. Right. After the fact, they go back and say, you know, after they hear all the facts, they say, you know, you didn't know what you were agreeing to. And what does that mean? It wasn't informed consent. It wasn't informed and then you're in violation. Have you in your years seen that this has like come to uh, a case at all? I, there are, and I have, and again, I haven't looked at this in a long time, but there, um, and probably less today than before, because I would think it's easier to, to show that people know what's going on today than it used to be. Sure. Right? And, um, and, but I can't think of any cases off the, but I can know in practice and you know this in practice, yeah, right? I've seen, and again, I haven't watched people practice in years, but I guarantee, I know that a lot of things don't change. Right. And so a lot of people sign forms for which in an office, some cases, even the agents themselves don't know what they're asking the people to sign. Right. I agree. Right? So, and that's a differentiator and that's the right. So I always, it, an informed consumer is a better consumer. It's a very interesting, it's just like one sentence in the code of ethics. And it's a very interesting sentence. 
because consent is not always informed and that's the thing right yeah so because we develop all these forms to indicate way too many forms so right? and then that's what they're supposed to do they're supposed to indicate right consent indicate right? but if you can't understand consent. it what are you consenting to right you right? don't know and that's and that's the point of the code and that's the point of when you read informed consent that's what it means conscious right this is a difficult area of people's lives often right and buying right. a home and matter of fact that's what we like to say as, as realtors right they were going to help guide you through one of the most you know complex parts of your life and so we know all about it we need to help them understand because if we don't it come, anyway you'll never know right <laughs> until no. the, right you'll never, you'll never know, know until you don't, don't. <laughs> That's yeah. so interesting. Well, I really appreciate you being on and kind of talking through that. It's it's interesting stuff. Thank you so much. That was my pleasure. Have a great day. Take care.